I was a primary investigator for this uh, phase two trial, evaluating uh, doublet chemotherapy versus monotherapy as second line treatment in uh, advanced skull bladder cancers. The study was a collaborative one. Um, it was done at uh, the, the Tata Memorial Hospital, as well as the All India Institute of Medical Sciences in New Delhi. So um, what we did was in patients who had progressed on um, gemcitabine-based chemotherapy as first-line treatment, um, we looked at whether a, a two-drug regimen uh, was superior to a single-drug regimen. The two-drug regimen was capecitabine plus irinotecan, and uh, the monotherapy was irinotecan alone. Um, the sample size for the study was uh, 98 patients. It was phase two randomized design. Uh, the primary endpoint was a six month overall survival percentage. And we had hypothesized that the doublet chemotherapy would improve um, uh, six month overall survival by approximately 15 percentage points from 55% to 70%. So we started accrual for the study in um, July uh, 2018 and completed accrual in uh, Jan 2020. And um, all 98 patients were available for evaluation of uh, safety and survival. There were 49 patients in each arm, uh, 49 in the Cape Ivory arm and 49 in the Iron Utican arm. And um, we were able to give a median of three cycles of Cape Ivory and four cycles of monotherapy Iron Utican. Um, the primary endpoint of the study, which was six month overall survival, the doublet chemotherapy arm did not improve overall survival compared to monotherapy. The overall survival six month for Cape ID, which was doublet, was 38%, while it was 52% for monotherapy. Uh, in terms of median OS, it was um, 5.16 months for Cape ID and 6.28 months for inotican uh, monotherapy. Uh, the progression-free survival between the two arms was also not significantly different. Um, in studies of this nature, where um, patients are essentially fragile uh, because of pretreatment, um, quality of life is an important factor to assess. And in terms of, um, we use the fact hep score to measure quality of life between the two arms. And uh, there was no difference in quality of life as well between the two arms. Um, another major point that we uh, looked at was toxicity and um, fatigue and diarrhea were uh, uh, had greater incidences in the doublet arm as compared to monotherapy. And the doublet arm, k required a dose modification in 27% of patients, while only 9% of patients required dose modifications in the monotherapy arm. So, um, to our knowledge, this is the single largest study in this particular setting of gallbladder cancers alone. However, if we take uh, biliary tract cancers as a whole, uh, there is the larger ABC6 study, which looked at Folfox versus active symptom control. And Folfox did provide a significant uh, um, benefit of approximately one month over active symptom control. So, But in our study, we clearly saw that monotherapy is as efficacious as tablet chemotherapy. And uh, till the time we identify targeted or targetable mutations in gallbladder cancer, chemotherapy is going to be the backbone. And when we look at that context, uh, monotherapy seems to be the way to go for use in this scenario in advanced gallbladder cancers. And it would be useful um, uh, that inotecan probably would be used as a comparator for future trials as well when we find newer therapies. We are exploring a couple of options. One, um, um, we might compare Folfox 6, which was used in um, the ABC6 study with Inotekin, uh, because that is probably um, uh, the study using Folfox 6 was conducted in the UK, and they may not uh, consider the results of our study because it was only in gallbladder cancers. So that is one thing. Second, uh, there is a drug called regorafenib, which has also shown benefit over active symptom control. So we might compare this with regorafenib because regorafenib is a tablet and it would be much easier to use for patients 
in this category. So these are the two ways we are going in terms of a comparative trial. We're also looking at targetable mutations in our hospital in a study of approximately 500 patients, and hopefully uh, that, that will complete approval in a year or so. Yes, so I think the key thing is that uh, gallbladder cancers are common in very specific geographical regions, right? India is one of them. Certain parts of India is one of them and maybe certain parts of South America. And since it is not a cancer that is very common in large parts of the world, um, you know, uh, investigative uh, research into this tumor is not very common. So I think it's incumbent on areas where it is common that the questions and answers come about. So I think, um, you know, India being one place is an uh, area where research is required for gallbladder cancers. So a number of, um, there are a number of hypotheses, but, um, you know, there's not, um, uh, one particular factor. Some people blame it on, uh, some people say that the increased salinity in the rivers that run along the Indo-Gangetic belt, that is one reason. For the first time um, last year, there was a study from the Tata Memorial Hospital where they identified a polymorphism in the um, in a particular gene which uh, increased the incidence of gallbladder cancers in the Indian population. So you know these are some of the reasons why why it is more common in india but there is not one single reason that has been identified with authority in uh, to explain this particular incident